Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be looking at chapter 1, which discusses limits, alternatives, and choices. So we're going to start with the definition of economics. What is economics? Economics is a social science that studies the choices that people make in order to satisfy their unlimited needs and wants with limited resources at their disposal in such a way that they achieve maximum satisfaction. It is a study of how individuals, businesses, and institutions make social choices in order to optimize their levels of satisfaction under conditions of scarcity. Now, this brings us to the next concept, which is the economic problem. So, the economic problem is the problem of scarcity. Okay, what is scarcity? This is when we have limited resources in order to satisfy unlimited needs and wants. And this limits our options and demand choices. Okay. We then look at opportunity cost. So what is opportunity cost? It is the value of the next best alternative that must be foregone in order to undertake an activity. For example, if we say that Shira has 10 Rand, she wants to buy a chocolate and an ice cream. The chocolate costs 8 Rand and the ice cream costs 10 Rand. So she does not have enough money to purchase both the ice cream and the chocolate. What does she do? She has to make a choice. Which one is she going to give up? If, for example, she chooses to purchase this chocolate, then the ice cream of 10 Rand becomes her opportunity cost because she gave it up in order to purchase the chocolate. Okay, then we look at rational behavior. Now, rational behavior is when consumers and producers weigh costs and benefits when making a decision. If the costs outweigh the benefits, then they will not go through with the decision. But if the benefits outweigh the cost, then they will go through with the decision because they are gaining more than what they are giving up. Now, consumers are rational in deciding what goods and services to buy. Businesses are rational in what they produce and how they produce it. And institutional entities are rational in deciding what public services to provide and how to finance them. When we look at rational behavior, we look at the concept of utility. This is the amount of pleasure or satisfaction that someone gets from consuming a good or a service. We also look at rational self-interest. This is when individuals look for um, opportunities to increase their levels of satisfaction. Now, rational behavior is not, uh, not perfect behavior. This is because we are always influenced by the people around us, the situations that we are facing, and the emotions that we are feeling when we are making a decision. What it does mean is that people's decisions are made with some outcome in mind. Okay. Then, rational self-interest is not the same thing as selfishness. Rational self-interest is behavior which is designed to increase personal satisfaction. And it cannot be the same thing as selfishness because in the economy, if someone wants to increase their wages, the interest, the um, profit that they are making, or um, the rent which they are receiving, it usually requires satisfying someone else's wants. Okay. Then rational behavior or economic decisions are rational or purposeful and not, uh, not random or chaotic rather. So whenever an economic decision is made, it's made with a purpose in mind. If, for example, a business says that they um, are going to purchase raw materials, why are they purchasing raw materials? To produce output. So there's a purpose behind that decision which they made. Okay, then we look at the rational consumer. This is someone who maximizes utility subject to a budget constraint. We look at two types of utilities, cardinal utility and ordinal utility. So cardinal utility is basically utility which is measurable in numerical values, whereas ordinal utility cannot be measured in numerical values, so we use indifference curves. Then we look at the rational producer, and this is someone who seeks to maximize profits and minimize costs. They do this in two ways. The first way that they can do it is by deciding on the quantity of goods or services to be produced, and then they try to produce as cost-effectively as possible. Right. The second way is that they decide on the, uh, the sum of money that may not be exceeded in the course of production, and then they try to produce as much as possible within that budget. Okay. 
Then we move on to the budget line. So the budget line is a curve or a schedule that shows the various combinations of two products that a consumer can purchase with a specific money income. And we draw this graph when we look at a budget line. So this is your basic budget line. This line here represents the total money income and the, the various combinations which you can purchase with all of your money income of good X and good Y. Everything within this line is attainable, okay? Meaning you have enough money to purchase these combinations within this line. Everything outside the line is unattainable because you do not have enough money to purchase those quantities of good X and good Y. Now, your budget line will shift for two reasons, either a change in income or a change in your prices. So if it, um, there's an increase in income, your budget line is going to shift outwards. Also, if there's a decrease in your prices, your budget line is going to shift outwards. So an increase in income will lead to an outward shift of your budget line. So this line shifted outwards because we have more money to purchase more goods and services. The same thing with a decrease in price. Even though you have the same amount of money as before, because the, there's a decrease in prices, you can purchase more units of each good or service. Okay. Now, if we look at another budget line, for example, this is our budget line, right? Good X here, good Y here. But there's only a change in the price of good X. So this means we can purchase less of good X. So our budget line will shift down this way, showing a decrease in the quantity of good X that we will be able to purchase with our money income. Okay. Then we look at macroeconomics and microeconomics. So macroeconomics examines or studies the economy as a whole or its basic subdivisions or aggregates. Now, an aggregate is a collection of specific economic units treated as if they were one unit. So that is why even though you have many households in an economy, they are um, put together as one. Okay. Then aggregates help macroeconomics seek to obtain an overview or general outline of the structure of the economy and the relationships of its major aggregates. Whenever you're looking at macroeconomics, you are looking at totals. Okay, so total output, total employment, total income, or you're looking at aggregates, which are also total aggregate expenditures, stuff like that. So you're basically looking at the general level of prices in the economy. Okay, when we speak about macroeconomics, we say we're looking at the entire beach. Microeconomics, on the other hand, is economics which is concerned with individual units, right? So it's decisions made by individual consumers, individual workers, individual households, and individual firms, okay? It measures the price of a specific product. So here you're looking at specific items, okay? Specific items. And here we say that we're looking at the sand, the rocks, and the shells on the beach, Next, we look at positive economics versus normative economics. So positive economics, these are facts, okay? Whereas normative economics, these are opinions. It's what the economy should be like, okay? So here you're looking at what is versus what ought to be. Now we move on to society's economizing problem. And this has to do with scarce resources. Now, your scarce resources are your factors of production, which is land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, okay? Now, each of them have remuneration. For land, you have rent. For labor, you have salaries and wages. For entrepreneurship, you have profit. And for capital, you have interest, okay? Now, land includes all your natural resources. Labor is both your physical and mental labor, and capital is your manufacturing aids used to produce goods and services. But the purchase of capital is an investment. Entrepreneurship combines land, labor, and capital to produce goods and services in order to make a profit. Then we look at the production possibility curve. 
Now, this displays the various combinations of goods and services that an economy can produce, right? So, this line here shows all the resources that we have in our economy, right? And these are the various combinations of good X and good Y that we can produce using all of our resources in the economy. Everything inside, again, is attainable, meaning you, meaning you have enough resources to produce that amount of good X and good Y. Everything outside is unattainable. You do not have enough resources to produce those quantities of good X and good Y. Now, your PPC curve will shift for two reasons. One being unemployment and two is economic growth. Unemployment leads to an inward shift of your PPC curve because it is a reduction in the amount of resources that we have. Your resource mainly being labor, right? So you cannot pr produce that amount of goods and services. So your production possibility curve will shift inwards. Economic growth, on the other hand, is when you have more resources in your economy. So this is when your PPC will shift outwards, indicating an increase in your resources. So it's either an increase in your resources or advances in technology, meaning you can mass produce goods and services, and then changes in one resource or technology in one area of production. Okay. So this here looks at economic growth. So that is an outward shift of your PPC curve. Now this one here looks at a change in one factor. So for example, maybe there's only a change or in this case, rather, there's only a change in the um, maybe resources of good Y. Maybe we have an advance in, um, in technology. So maybe um, technology came and now we can mass produce good Y. So that's why you see that there's an outward shift of your PPC curve here. Okay, now we look at chap um, question one, sorry. This says, indicate whether the following statement applies to microeconomics or macroeconomics. The first one is the inflation rate increased by 10%. Now, inflation has to do with the entire economy and not only specific products. So, inflation is macroeconomics. In 2019, the South African economy's economic growth rate declined by 5%. Now, economic growth looks at the economy as a whole. So again, this is macroeconomics. Then C, the prices of bread in Gauteng increased due to the reduction in the quantity of wheat produced. So we're looking at the prices of bread specifically. So whenever you're looking at a specific product, you're looking at microeconomics. Okay. Question two says, what effect does an increase in the amount of factors of production have on PPC curve? So an increase in all factors of production. So our PPC curve is going to look like this. You have your general PPC with good X, good Y on your axes. They will sometimes tell you which, um, pro, uh, which um, axis um, either good X or good Y goes on. But if they don't, you can just put your own things, right? And now we have an increase in the amount of factors of production. So we have more resources in our economy. And when we have more resources in the economy, we have an outward shift of your PPC curve. Okay. Um, for this one also, if they said that there was an increase in the um, resources of just say X only, right? then your PVC would only shift out for X, okay? Because you can now produce more of X. Question three says, show the effect on the budget line if there's an increase in the price of product X if the price of product Y stays the same. So we have to draw a budget line, but it says here there's an increase in the price of product X and the price of product Y stays the same. So, if we have to draw this budget line, this will be our original budget line, okay? They say product X is on the Y axis, so you have X here, you have Y here. Now, there's an increase in the price of product X. 
if there's an increase in the price of a good it means you can purchase less of that with your money income so your pp i mean your budget line sorry is going to shift downward like that because you're going to see a reduction in the amount of good x which you can produce but good y will stay the same okay so that's it for this video and thank you